second speaker for this session. Uh, I will be talking. Oh, thank you for the clicker. And I would like to start my uh, timer. Yeah, I want to take uh, 45 minutes for talking about the second topic, which is about machine learning. And this session, I'd like to talk more about the how you can use the machine learning uh, by showing the real-world examples and demonstrations. And the, the, it, at the last session, uh, Yuhen will be talking about a little bit more about how, how what is the detail about uh, uh, how to use the machine learning. Okay, so I'm Kaz, I'm developer advocate. Uh, so it's like a half evangelist. It's uh, like a advocate for developers. So I usually attending the, the meetup or events like this, speaking and talking about the technologies, and especially for focusing on data and analytics products such as BigQuery or TensorFlow machine learning products. I have been working at Google Tokyo office for over seven years. Old. And I'd like to start discussing about what are the meanings of those buzzwords such as AI or machine learning, ML or neural network. There's no scientific definitive definition of what is AI or artificial intelligence, but you can think that AI is a science or technology to, to make things smart, like a building an autonomous driving car or drawing a retin computer drawing a beautiful picture. And there has been so many different approaches for realizing the vision of AI, and one of them is machine learning. What is ML? ML is a new way to program your computer. Usually, if you want to build a new IT system, you have to hire a programmers, human programmers, to instruct computers how to solve each problem, how to process your data. But instead, with ML, you don't have to hire programmers. You can just use your machine learning algorithms to use data to program your computer. So that computer tries to find a certain way, certain patterns to process your data and solve your data. And one of the, the machine learning algorithms is the neural network. And the neural network is seeing a booming or breakthrough at around 2012. So that's the reason why Google has been spending so much uh, the resource and cost for developing neural network technology. So let me show some um, very simple example how machine learning can solve your problem. Uh, pretend you are a programmer, IT programmer, and your customer asks you to solve this problem. How to classify these fruits as an apple and orange? Maybe the easiest way is to look at the color of the pixels. If it's an red, it must be apple. If it's an orange, it must be orange. But your customer comes to you and says that uh, in production system, the performance of a camera is not great, so what you, you would get is monochrome image. What kind of the code, Java code or Python code or C code, to classify these fruits as an apple or orange? In this case, you have to take a look at the shapes or textures or patterns. That could be a pretty difficult problem for the IT programmers. And then the, your customer comes to you too again and asks you more difficult things like classifying these images. What are these? Looks like mobs, but if you you know, carefully look at some of the images like this. It's a dog. It's called sheep dog. Right? Not, not mob. So how do you crash by, what kind of program code you would write to crash by these images as a dog or mob? At this point, maybe the usual programmer <laughs> would not take any requests from your customers. But if you know that you know, neural network or machine learning can solve your problem, you can get a, a fairly decent the accuracy on classifying these images. Uh, specifically, by using Cloud Vision API from Google, it does a, uh, a, a pretty decent job on classifying this. With any machine learning algorithms, it's almost impossible to get 100% accuracy. Usually, you would get accuracy such, such as the 70%, 80%, 90, 95, or 98, but not 100%. But still, you know, for certain requirements, for certain use cases, it's does a pretty much better job than the human programmers. So how neural network can do this? Actually, you can think neural network as a, just a function in programming language or mathematics. You can put any kind of data as an input, and you can get the output data. 
So you know, one most popular use case for the neural network or deep learning is the uh, image classification. So putting many uh, images such as dogs and cats and train the neural network, train the function to give you an expected answer such as cat or dog labels. But you can try using neural networks to solve any kind of problem. For example, if you have a, for example, one of my customers is a, a large mega bank in Japan. Uh, they were trying to capture a um, fraud use case in credit card. You want to capture, yeah, the fraud use case in credit card. So they converted all the user activities, credit card user activities, into a bunch of numbers. It's called a vector and put that vector into a neural network so that they were able to get pretty high accuracy on classifying what user activities could be a fraud activity or normal activities. So that could be just one example of the neural network use cases. Or maybe other use cases could be finding a premium user or a spam user in your e-commerce server or gaming server. So the neural ne network is just a function. That's the key point here. So let's see how neural net network can solve your problem by looking at the data, by using this double spiral pattern. This pattern has the uh, two data, uh, x1 and x2. And if you plot those data as a data point, then you will see there's a two different groups. One is the blue spiral, and another is orange spiral. And for humans, it's not so hard for classifying these data points. So, for example, if you have a new data point here, that must be blue. If you have a new data point here, that must be orange. It's not so hard for humans. But what kind of program code you would write to classify these data points as an orange or blue? So, let's take a look at how neural networks solve this problem. So here I have a demonstration called TensorFlow Playground where anybody can play with the real, the live neural network working inside your browser where you can train the neural network model with the uh, double spiral pattern. So I have just started training the model. So you see that the neural networks doesn't make sense uh, on the, uh, the data when you started the training. But if you, you know, patiently keep providing the training data, and providing the computation resource, then it gradually tries to capture the complex pattern, double spiral pattern, as you're seeing right now. And the point here is that I haven't done any programming on this. Only I have had to do is providing the uh, training data and define the design of a neural network, like uh, how many neurons in each layer or how many layers in neural network. That's it. So computer tries to find what's the best way to looking at the data to solve this particular problem. And for certain use cases, it works as, just, as uh, good as human programmers or human uh, operators. And you can extend the same te uh, techniques to recognize, this, for example, the, the images, uh, the handwritten digits in uh, monochrome images just by using the single layer neural network. This is not a deep learning. This is a, just a single, simplest single layer neural networks. So you can just flatten the, all the pixel data, 28 by 28, into um, 784 uh, pixels, numbers in a single vector, so that you can train the neural networks to what pixel you, you have to look at to find out the, uh, the image is uh, digit eight or not. So it's a very simple algor algorithm or method we are using. But still, this model can provide you like a 90% accuracy on recognizing handwritten text. And if you have more, 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 more and more higher accuracy, much higher accuracy, then you can have the multiple layer between input data and output data. That is so-called deep neural network. And at Google, we are using a deep neural network model which has about 40 or 80 layers between input and output data, deep neural network model. And by training that kind of deep learning model, you can have the neurons inside deep learning models uh, to be able to recognize things like the edges of objects, it's like edges of objects, or the textures or patterns in an image, or in a part of objects, like a nose of dog or wheel in an automobile. Well, finally, you would have um, 
neurons that can recognize the whole object. It's a vehicle or flower, cat, or wedding party. So that's how neural network works. And Google has been using this technology to implement many different uh, production services at Google. Over 100 production projects, including Google Search, or Android, or Maps, and Gmail. If you are using Google Search every day, that means you are using deep learning technologies from Google every day. We have introduced RankBrain, which is a deep learning model for defining the ranking of the search result in 2015. And also, the Google Photo is one of the most successful use cases of deep learning at Google. So now you don't have to put any labels or tags on the photos you have taken with the smartphones. Instead, you can just put a keyword for certain images like a dogs or a wedding party. Inbox mobile application or Gmail mobile application now has smart reply feature that uses the natural language processing technology to understand the context inside each email thread and try to show the options to reply to email. So you will be seeing the, uh, some buttons. Oh, it's not showing well, but uh, you can have the buttons to reply to each email thread. So it's generated by the machine learning or AI algorithms. And now it, over 12% of the all responses from those mobile applications is now generated by the smart reply feature. Google Translate recently uh, introduced a new machine translation model that has improved, improved, uh, improved the uh, fluency and accuracy uh, of the uh, translated text significantly. This is a an, uh, an huge uh, result we got from the deep learning model last year inside Google. We are using the deep learning model to control, automate the uh, control of the cooling resources, uh, cooling systems inside Google data center. In every data center at Google, we have like tens of thousands of machines. And now it is automatically controlled for the cooling systems by using deep learning model. And that was, uh, we were able to reduce the uh, power consumption for cooling system for up to 40%. That is a significant result we got. So now at Google, deep learning is not a hype or buzzword anymore. It's a stable and uh, production ready pro uh, technologies actually used in Google uh, over 100 production projects. And now we are focusing on externalizing the technology to the developers and customers. And we have two different products. One is the uh, Cloud ML APIs, and another is the customizable machine learning model that, that I'll be talking about later. But let me first uh, talk to you about the machine learning API. That is a pre-trained machine learning model. That means you don't have to train your uh, neural network model by yourself. Instead, Google has trained the uh, models for the image recognition or the voice recognition or natural language processing. So all you have to do is send your images or audio or text to the API, and that's it. So let me show you some uh, demonstration of those APIs. So Cloud Vision API. So all the demonstration of the ML APIs I'll be showing is available for anyone. So if you're interested, please go to cloud.google.com where you can find the, all the product pages for vision or uh, speech or any natural language API. And each product page has the uh, tried API box like this, where you can upload any kind of images you want to try out the API. And it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to sign up or you don't have to pay anything to try out. So let's upload the sheepdog example here. So you'll be getting the result label within like a few seconds like this. So label is like a dog or dog like mama or mama. And then there's another API called the Video Intelligence API, which is a video version of the Vision API. So if you choose one of these sample videos and play the videos, then you can see those labels will be showing. It's only showing properties. It's not so interesting. <laughs> okay, let me. 
So I, I have chosen a wrong sample. It only shows the ball property. <laughs> but uh, in other use cases, uh, you, it should be showing the, any objects you found in a video. So now if you have or your customer has any video material stored on storage, you don't have to have uh, human operators or human workers uh, watch out all the objects in the, uh, the videos. You only have to upload the video to the, the API. And now we have the speech API as well. So let me try that. So even though my English is, has an accent, the API can try to understand what I'm saying. So I should be maybe United States. Let me try. Hello, this is a demonstration of the voice recognition by Google's deep learning technology. <laughs> Not estate planning. Sorry about that. This is for my uh, pronunciation. But still, you know, uh, it provides the high accuracy on recognizing the uh, source voice. And then you can put the, uh, those results into, um, not a statement, but anyway, uh, you can put the result into the uh, natural language process uh, API to understand what's the meaning of, of those sentences you recognized. So the API gives you back the, uh, what are the entities, like a company name or the location name in the sentence, or the, what's the sentiment of each sentence. Uh, is it saying something positive or something negative? by score. And also you can easily get the uh, syntactic analysis result like this. This is one of the hardest part of natural language processing and uh, where you have to hire some uh, natural language processing scientist. But with that, you can just send the natural language to the API so you'll be getting all the part of the speech for each sentence and what are the dependency between those part of speech. Okay. So those are the, uh, the ML APIs. So to get this kind of result, you don't have to have any expertise on using machine learning by yourself. But not all of the problems could be solved by these machine learning APIs. For example, I'm getting many inquiries from uh, medical institutes, institute or hospitals. How can we find a cancer from the uh, CT images or MRI images? For that kind of the customer specific or business specific use cases, you cannot use the uh, vision API or speech API because those APIs are pre-trained uh, with the generic images or the, uh, the generic data. So that's where you may want to take a look at the TensorFlow, which is an open source tool for building your own machine learning model from scratch. TensorFlow is the standard tool we are using inside Google for building any new machine learning or AI services. And we have open sourced it in November uh, 2015. And the benefit you could get with TensorFlow is the scalability and portability. So you can just start trying out TensorFlow by downloading the source code, uh, TensorFlow code, on your laptop or Mac or Windows. It works on your laptop. But you will find that your laptop is, doesn't have much CPU power to train the uh, more heavy-weighted task. Like, uh, for example, if you want to train a neural network model to classify an uh, image of dog or cat, then you may want to use a GPU. Not only one GPU, maybe 10 GPU or 100 GPU. That's where the TensorFlow provides the uh, benefit of the distributed training. So any serious production level deep learning users are using the multiple GPUs or tens or hundreds of GPUs. And TensorFlow is designed as a scalable distributed training framework. So you don't have to change the code of TensorFlow uh, significantly so that you can still using the existing TensorFlow code to train the model on the tens of GPUs at inside cloud or any on-premise devices. And once you have finished your training, of your, your neural network model with TensorFlow, then you can copy that TensorFlow model into mobile phones or uh, Raspberry Pi or embedded systems because we provide the framework for running the TensorFlow models in those smaller devices. We recently called a new uh, runtime called TensorFlow Lite, L-I-T-E, which runs on the smaller devices such as the iOS, Android, or Raspberry Pi. So you can have the uh, tens of megabytes of the neural network models uh, compressed into a few megabytes to learn the, uh, those models inside smartphones or Raspberry Pi. So with those benefits, 
the TensorFlow is getting the, so much popularity in deep learning industry. It's the most popular deep learning framework in the world compared with the other frameworks and tools. And the many enterprises and companies are actually using TensorFlow for POCs or production use cases, including Airbus, ARM, Dropbox, Intel, Qualcomm, everybody. Even the cucumber farmer in Japan. How, how many people heard about the cucumber farm use cases? Oh, thank you so much, maybe 10 people. Actually, I wrote the blog post about this and uh, it got yeah, so many uh, page views. And the uh, thing is that the cucumber farmer in Japan, they got a son, Makoto-san. He uh, quitted his company as an engineer and started helping his parents cucumber farming about three years ago. And then he found out the most time-consuming task or tedious task for the cucumber farmer is classifying those cucumbers into many classes. His mother spent eight hours a day for just for classifying those cucumbers into nine different classes. And that is not easy task. You cannot hire part-time workers to do that. You have to be a um, professional cucumber classifier, looking at the uh, you know, shape, lengths, and colors, textures of cucumbers. And Makoto-san, he really didn't want to help that. <laughs> Instead, because he was an engineer, he downloaded TensorFlow and uh, took 9,000 photographs of the cucumber, labeled with his mother's classified labels, and he built his own cucumber solder. And he only spent like $1,500 to build this thing, but still it got pretty high accuracy. And now, in this fall, he is about to bring this technology into production. He's actually really trying to use this in production. So the point here is that to build this kind of the high accuracy image recognition system for agriculture use cases, you don't have to hire uh, the data scientist or spend millions of dollars having a contract with the system with integrators. Instead, you can just have a one farmer downloading TensorFlow to build a POC. This is another use case I made by myself with my son uh, last summer. This is a rock, paper, scissors machine. It's just a toy. You know, you wear a glove and it has a sensor to detect your, the uh, pose of your rock, paper, or scissors. <laughs> yeah, you cannot win computer. <laughs> this is just a toy. It's not an AI or deep learning, anything. But still, I have used TensorFlow to build this with my son. Uh, I, what I did was uh, capture the, all the globe sensor data and visualize it. And then I made a very simple linear transformation model. It's just like the most simple the linear algebra you have learned at high school. And then used TensorFlow to calculate the probability of the lock, paper, scissors. So even for this kind of the toy programming, you can use TensorFlow to solve your everyday life everyday problem. So that's the power of the TensorFlow. It's a demo, uh, the tool for democratizing the power of machine learning. And when you want to bring the technology into production or enterprises, we'll be, you will be see the challenges of machine learning, such as the, you need the large data sets, or you need to have the good models, and you need lots of computation. So you have to have the tens of GPUs from NVIDIA. That's the challenge. But the solution is our data center. Google's data center is not just a bunch of the buildings with the thousands of machines. It's designed as a massively powerful computer. You know, we, you have like a thousands or tens of thousands of machines, and with, at Google data center, you can learn it as a single massively powerful computer because we have a specialized uh, container technology and networks to use that as a massively powerful supercomputer. So, if you run TensorFlow model on the Google's cloud uh, with those uh, much, uh, the MPP infrastructure, you can get much, much faster training speed, like 40, 40 times faster or 300 times faster. So, for the, any uh, current researchers or developers for deep learning, people are still spending a few days, a few weeks to finish their training on deep learning. But for Google engineers, you only spend like a tens of minutes, like a lunchtime hour, 
to finish their trainings because we have the cloud infrastructure with the massively parallel processing infrastructure. So that's the largest reason why Google has been so successful on deploying the deep learning into production. That's not, not only about the mathematic model or data scientists, but also it's about the, uh, the distributed training infrastructure with the Google Cloud environment. And we even developed our own customized chip or LSI or ASIC just for running the TensorFlow or neural network calculation. That is called Tensor Processing Unit or TPU. This is not CPU or GPU. This is a specialized LSI designed by Google. And it provides the almost same uh, equivalent performance to the latest supercomputer. So you can say that Google is building something like supercomputer just for the solving the TensorFlow or deep uh, neural network problem. And now we are externalizing this power of Google Cloud as a product called ML Engine or Machine Learning Engine. So you don't have to care about all the difficult stuff like building a GPU cluster at Google Cloud or using the TPU or things like that. Only you have to do is get started with TensorFlow with your laptop. And if you confirm your TensorFlow code works well, then you can upload that TensorFlow code to ML Engine with your training data. And that's it. So all the hardest part, like uh, maintaining the, uh, the GPU nodes or, or the recovering from the failures, are taken care of by the Google engineers. So let me show some demonstrations that combines everything I have talked. The Find Your Candy is a robot arm demonstration that works with speech API, NL API, natural language API, and TensorFlow running on ML engine. That uh, uh, is, works as a total solution for picking up a candy. So maybe I can, oh, I don't know, hear sound, okay. So here he said, may I have some gum to this, the microphone, then speech API can recognize the words, and then natural language API can understand the, what the meaning of the sentence he has spoken. And then it is running in the TensorFlow model, uh, with the word to vec algorithms, word to vec tries to find the, uh, the best candidate to satisfy his uh, request, and then uses the uh, image recognition model running on TensorFlow to find the best candy or GAM, in this case it's a GAM, GAM, uh, to pick up the GAM by ro using the robot arm. Okay, so, let me stop it. And I have designed this system and ordered our vendor in Japan to build this, and they have built this system within 20 days. And I only s s spent like uh, $30,000, dollars. so it's not so expensive. So you, you already got the, uh, the you know, real-world solution uh, by using the deep learning model. Okay. How do I explain? So lastly, I'd like to show some of the real-world example, the customers who are actually using TensorFlow and ML Engine in production or POC cases, like Airbus, AXA, SMFG, Okne. This is a project called Global Fishing Watch. This is a project for preventing overfishing in oceans. It is tracking the old GPS position of 200,000 vessels or ships in each ocean at real time. So they are collecting all the GPS position and storing on the Google Cloud storage and using Cloud Dataflow to do batch processing and pre-processing. And then they are using TensorFlow uh, or running on machine learning engine to extract the patterns or features of movement to know what they are doing with those vessels or ships in each ocean. So the result is that you can actually get pretty high accuracy on counting how many fishing boats on each, in each ocean. Like, by looking at the movement, you can tell the ship is doing a trawl fishing or long line fishing or past same fishing. So this is one use case of the uh, deep learning and machine learning model running on Google Cloud. This is a second uh, use case that is by uh, QP. QP is uh, one of the largest food manufacturer in Japan. They were trying to find a bad potato cube on belt conveyors for manufacturing baby food. Because they are so sensitive about the ingredients of the uh, 
uh, those food or baby foods. So they are using very high quality ingredients. That means it's really hard for them to prepare for the sample for, for the bad potato cubes. But if you have any experience on you know, using your own deep learning model, it's, it's very important to have the samples for the bad potato cubes. So in this case, they didn't use the uh, uh, supervised learning. In this case, they have used unsupervised learning with the autoencoder. That means you don't have to collect any bad use cases. Instead, they have built an um, outlier detector uh, that requires only the good pot uh, uh, the potato cubes to train the model. So this is the real PLC running inside their factory. So in this video, actually, it has sound, and it uh, rings a bell whenever it finds the bad potato cubes. So by hearing the sound of the bell, you can see, uh, you can find the, uh, the where in on the belt conveyor the bad potato cube will be coming. So until now, they have been hiring so many human operators to watching out the, on the belt conveyor, to waiting for the bad potato cube coming for all day long. It was a so heavy weighted task, but now it's super lightweight task. People are just waiting for the sound of bell. Coca-Cola is now using the uh, TensorFlow uh, for the, uh, their loyalty program. They provide the, uh, the smartphone applications that uses the camera to capture the image of the bottle cap to read the uh, serial numbers, unique numbers inside the bottle cap. And they use the TensorFlow model running inside it to do the OCR on it. And as I said, any machine learning model cannot provide achieve 100% accuracy, so that makes mistake. But unique case, unique idea in this case is that they are letting consumers, users, fixing those models. So every time they make small mistakes on reading the characters, they collect all the real images from consumers and they collect the, all the correct labels from consumers. So they were able to continuously increasing the accuracy of the model by collecting those, the correct data, ground truths from the consumers. This is the last uh, use case I'd like to show, which is the Ognet. Ognet is the large, largest uh, real-time car auction service provider in Japan. They are handling five million cars uh, for auction each year. But the problem is that they have to upload, the, each users of this auction, the uh, used car dealers, have to take uh, 20 different images for each car uh, they want to enter into auction and put the labels on each images. Uh, for example, if you have the images for the uh, a car from front side or, or left side, right side, or an image of the wheel or tire, everything, the human operator has to spend 15 minutes to do the labeling, you know, tagging on those images. So they have built their own used car image crash fire uh, with TensorFlow running on machine learning engine. And by Using the technique called transfer learning, they were able to reduce the number of the images per car to 200 images. So instead of, of preparing you know, thousands of images, you only have to have uh, hundreds of image, images for each car model to get high accuracy on classifying those cars. And by using ML engine, they were able to get the 86 times faster training time. So and the result is much, much faster operation time. So now they have reduced the number for enter, entering each car into auction from 15 minutes to three minutes. So let's take a look at the demonstration. So once you have taken the 20 different images for, for a single car, you can upload those images to the system. So then system start classifying those images with labels. And most important point of this use case of this project is that the Ognet, this company didn't have any expertise or knowledge about machine learning or deep learning when they have started this project. But because they were using TensorFlow, they were able to find the best partner expert in the community and the system. So that they were able to hire a one expert co company and spent three weeks with those expert company and learn everything they had to learn to build a production quality deep learning system. So as you can see, the, you can get, they, you, they can get the pretty high accuracy or score on classifying those images. And now this system is in production since last December. 
Okay, so that was the uh, use cases I wanted to show. And as summary, there are two products we are providing. One is ML API. That is that doesn't require any expertise. So anybody can try out ML API from now, just by going to the product pages for vision, speech, natural language APIs. The another solution we provide is the uh, TensorFlow, which is an open source tool. So actually, you don't have to use the Google Cloud to run TensorFlow. You can start using your own laptop or your own on-premise GPU server to get started with TensorFlow. And maybe you would found that Google Cloud could be the best places for running the TensorFlow by using ML Engine or any other uh, products such as Google BigQuery or DataFlow or Google Cloud Storage. So we provide the real-world solution uh, for machine learning or deep learning. So that's it. Thank you so much.